Hi, hello, Mr. Mr. Mahesh Prasad from Department of Physics. As you know, well, dear students, we are in a chapter that is nothing but the oscillation. And this particular concept, we have discussed many concepts like uh, we have started up with uh, the basic motions like periodic motion, oscillatory motion, simple harmonic motion. And under this particular concept, we have got uh, uh, what would be its angular frequency as well as what would be its uh, uh, time period as well as we have got in the previous class that is nothing but a uh, uh, basic formula we can explain that is uh, displacement relation displacement relation in terms of simple harmonic motion yes or no? well by having that particular idea we will try to have whenever uh, well if I speak about uh, this could be the a pendulum which is having some length with the bob over here and as I told in the previous class your bob which is lying exactly in a mean position and this could be the extreme position and now in today's class we will try to get in which particular point your bob which can experience a maximum kinetic energy also in which particular point your uh, both can acquire maximum as well as minimum kinetic energy. At the meantime, we will try to get what would be the uh, acceleration in the mean position, what would be the acceleration in extreme position. So, we will try to prove mathemat mathematically so that you can have a, a clear picture about what we are going to deal over here. Understood? Well, uh, we will try to have a eye on what would be the velocity of a above in main position as well as extreme position so that we try to get the derivation so I can write uh, initially we will try to get the velocity of uh, the velocity in SHM the velocity in SHM we will try to have I on this so whenever this particular bob right now your bob is in main position if I displace some with respect to mean position, don't you think it is having some displacement with respect to mean position? If it is so, what is the formula I can expect? In the displacement relation y is equal to what we have. It is a sin omega into t. Where a is what? A can be taken as a amplitude. A in the sense what? Where a is where a is amplitude. Where what do you mean by amplitude? Amplitude is maximum displacement. What do you mean by amplitude? It is a maximum displacement about its main position. Okay. So now, according to your knowledge, what do you mean by velocity? Velocity is nothing but what? It is the rate of what displacement. Yes or no? Velocity is equal to what? Velocity is equal to what? dy by dt with respect to time. Your displacement is very. So, I can expect uh, that is the velocity I can expect. So, similarly, to get the velocity, I should do dy divided by dt, I should do s or no? Yes. So, here, what is the, in the place of y, what we have over here in the equation 1? In the equation 1, can I substitute over here? So, if I substitute, what I can get? That is nothing but uh, d of that is a sin omega into d. Now, we are supposed to go with the differentiation. Why differentiation? Because d by dt is there. Understood? Well, so if it is so, what I can write over here? What is the differentiation of a sin theta? Always remember, at least here or not, you remember, d by dx of that is a d by dx of sin x that is nothing but what we can write that is nothing but we can write that is uh, cos x understood so similarly we can write uh, d by dx of cos x is equal to minus sin x ok so this is how exactly we supposed to do but, but here we have to turn in the place of x over here. So, once again is opposed to the differentiation of omega into t. So, we can expect uh, d by dx of x power n can be taken as n into x power n minus 1. So, this is one formula we can expect over here. 
now we suppose to go with the two time differentiation of one sin omega t then what is there in the place of x over here understood well differentiation of this can be taken as where a is a constant can be taken outside the differentiation it is a into differentiation of a sin theta or sin x can be taken as a cos x so in the place of cos x so what is supposed right that is nothing but the cos omega into t into in the place of x one second differentiation should be done that is omega into t omega as now is a constant now with respect anyhow t is a constant with respect to t we are differentiating over here so now what is supposed right over here i can write that is a differentiation of a omega into t what i can write here is that that is a differentiation of t is one i can expect how one comes in the picture because in the place of a, this is t power 1 so 1 minus 1 what i can write over here that is nothing but if i say t power 1 is equal to 1 into t power 1 minus 1 is equal to t power 0 t power 0 is the 1 1 and 1 is 1 Equal to one. That is a d by dt. I can expect. So that's what we can expect. So once again, suppose do the differentiation of this. So what I can expect into omega is some sort of picture. Okay. Well, so all together, what I can write a omega cos omega d is equal to velocity. Now the job is not done. Still, you can further simplify this equation. How we can simplify? It's very simple. We'll do that. And hope you know the basic formula. The basic formula that we can expect that is nothing but uh, sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one. As yes or no? Similarly, we know sine square omega t plus uh, cos square omega t is equal to one. We can expect similarly. What we can write? Cos omega t is equal to one minus. We shift this over here, and it becomes sine square omega t with the square root is comes into picture because it is cos square omega t. Is all no? Yes. You substitute this cos omega t in the equation this in the equation second. So what we can write? I can take it as. V which is equal to what I can write V which is equal to a into omega is the square root of that is one minus sine square omega t I can expect S or no yes so now what I do here is that I multiply a inside the square root so if I do so what I can expect V which is equal to omega of that is a square minus A square sine square omega t. Yes or no? Yes. So now you think and give me the answer. A square sine square omega t. We had y is equal to a sine omega t. If I have a square sine square omega t, can I replace this as this as y square over here? Yes. So now v which is equal to what I can write? Omega of into square root. It is a square minus y square. This is the relation of velocity. I can say. Now the point comes where in which particular point we will be having velocity, and in which particular point we won't have any velocity. Which particular point in the sense we are mainly speaking about mean position and extreme position. This could be the mean position, and this could be the extreme position. Now. This is the point where do you find any displacement with respect to initial position? No. Which means here in mean position we can expect in mean position, especially in mean position, what will be the velocity we can expect? Y is equal to zero. If y is equal to zero, what will be the answer? What will be the velocity? V is equal to y if I make it as zero. So what is left out over there? That is omega into a is left out. S or no because square root of a square becomes a over here. And in extreme position, in extreme, 
in extreme of position in extreme position what would be the value i can expect when y is equal to k if y is equal to k it looks like a 1 minus 1 is 0 0 if anything is 0 so what would be the velocity at extreme position 0 understood so in which particular point we can expect the maximum velocity when your bob moves towards the mean position when the bob moves towards the mean position it which can experience maximum velocity in extreme point we can expect there is no velocity at all it's as simple as when object moves at a upward in direction when it reaches a maximum height there won't be any velocity got it well and this is one point we can expect by having this idea we will try to have a acceleration we will try to have a acceleration acceleration in shm so what will be the acceleration we will try to find and anyhow you know what do you mean by acceleration acceleration which is nothing but rate of velocity what do you mean by velocity it is a rate of displacement similarly we can expect your acceleration that is nothing but dv divided by dt. Yes or no? So, don't we have the value of the velocity over here? So, this is the velocity relation we have. Can we get acceleration? Yes. So, we know velocity is equal to what we have that is a omega cos omega t. Correct? Well, and similarly we can expect the Acceleration that is the dv divided by dt I can expect. Yes? Yes. So now the thing is uh, here we have v and here we have dt. Your job is to substitute the relation. So what is that relation? That is the d divided by dt of that is a omega into cos omega into t. Yes or no? Yes. So now what I can take common over here, I can take a to omega as outside. So what is the differentiation I can expect? That is a to omega, that is a d by dt of cos omega t. It looks like a similar scenario of differentiation of the cos x. That is a minus sin x. But the thing is once again we have, this once again is supposed to differentiate. The things which is there inside the bracket, it is omega into t, once again omega into t where t is a variable we suppose to differentiate with respect to t over here so now what I can expect a omega differentiation of the cos omega t is minus sin omega into t into differentiation of omega t is omega understood well so now omega into omega is what omega square so what I can write a omega square with the minus sin omega into t but we know a sin omega t is y over here altogether I can write that is acceleration is equal to minus omega square into y so this could be the one more relation I can find over here s or no? yes so this is how exactly we supposed to go with this relation and one more thing we have to remember that is nothing but once again it which particular point we can have acceleration as well as uh, we don't have a and which particular point we cannot expect acceleration we try to uh, see one by one that is nothing but in mean position in mean position in mean position what would be the displacement relation I can expect what would be the displac displacement relation we can expect that is nothing but uh, y is equal to 0 if y is equal to 0, we cannot expect any acceleration. So, acceleration is equal to 0. Similarly, in a extreme position, in extreme position, what we can expect? In extreme position, y is equal to k. If y is equal to k, what you can replace? That is nothing but what would be the acceleration we can find? Omega square into A. So this is what exactly we can expect over here. So in which are the point, in which particular point we can expect the maximum acceleration? 
so when the bob moves for example this is the pen the pen is there in a mean position when it moves towards the extreme position at this particular point we can expect acceleration but we cannot expect any velocity similarly when a bob or a pen is in a mean position we can expect a velocity but we cannot expect any acceleration understood so this is what exactly we can mathematically prove here. okay so based on this idea we can expect uh, many things over here well okay and based on this uh, and soon after that we will try to have a idea which is based on the frequency as well as uh, time period of a loaded spring okay well Well, well, dear students, uh, we will try to have the oscillation over here. Well, okay. Well, uh, what comes to your mind when I say oscillation of a spring? Obviously, spring, spring is comes into picture. Yes or no? Well, so I think uh, I have taken one spring to somewhat like this. Okay. So this could be the spring I can expect. So now, don't you think? Uh, if I add any weight over here, if I add any weight, what happens? The spring is going to stretch with respect to its initial configuration. Yes or no? It is going to stretch. If I stretch somewhat like this, and if I leave at this particular moment, do you think a spring will move up or down? Obviously, it will come back its initial position. Yes or no? Yes. So now the question comes: What would be the Oscillate. What would be the frequency or what would be the period it can take when I added a load over here? Okay. So now we'll try to get mathematically so that you can have a, a clear picture about that. Now, whenever I apply a force, when I add the load over there, what happens? One the force which is created that is nothing but a restoring force. What do you mean by restoring force? Which will try to regain the original configuration. Which means, if I if I add, so if I stretch some more like this, what happens? The one more force which is acting upward in direction, which, is, which behaves as a restoring force, which try to regain the original configuration. That is called as restoring force. Okay. So now we have discussed uh, in terms of simple harmonic motion. That is nothing but uh, we have got. Force is directly proportional to displacement. Yes or no? Yes. And one more thing, the your force is always directed towards its mean position. So, which means I can expect a minus symbol over here. So, whenever I write in terms of some equation, we suppose take one constant that is nothing but f, which is equal to minus k into y. I can take over here s. Well, so let us say it is equation one. I can expect that could be equation one. I can expect. So now, and uh, one more point comes into picture. There is nothing but uh, we can expect. Uh, try to remember the formula which we have got in terms of acceleration. What is the formula we can expect for simple harmonic motion acceleration formula? Just now we have got. What is that? That is nothing but acceleration is equal to minus. Omega square into y. Yes or no? So this was the formula we have got over here. Well, and the way to re recall the formula is uh, we have obtained in terms of Newton's law of motion, which is nothing but a second law of motion that is nothing but the uh, f which is equal to m into a. Okay, where a is acceleration, m is a mass. I can explain. So in the let us say it is equation two and it is equation three. Substitute equation two in equation three. What can I expect? It is f which is equal to I can expect m of minus omega square into y. Let us say it is equation four. And compare equation one with equation four. Let us do that. Compare equation one and equation four. What we can expect here? That is nothing but if I do so, I can expect 
minus m omega square into y is equal to minus k into y. Obviously, you know which are the terms will get cancelled out here. That is nothing but y and y will get cancelled out here. And what is remaining over here? And minus and minus will get cancelled. What is remaining? We can expect m omega square is equal to k. I can expect where k is a spin constant. Okay. So with respect to omega, what we can write? That is the square root of k by m I can write. But we know, according to our knowledge, with respect to time period if we want to get, omega is equal to what I can expect, 2 pi by t I can take s. So if I do so, 2 pi divided by t is equal to square root of k by m. But if I want to write with respect to t, I can write 2 pi into square root of m by k. This is a time period relation I can expect. Yes or no? Yes. And similarly we can write if I replace omega as a 2 pi f that is a 2 pi f which is equal to what I can write? Square root of k by m I can take. But if I want to write with respect to frequency I can write frequency is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi into square root of k by yeah, my camera. So this normal formula I can expect over here, where k is a spin constant, this m is the mass of a mass coordinate length, and the two pi is a pi is a constant we can expect, and this is how exactly it varies with respect to uh, with respect to applied rule. Okay. So so this could be the time period I can expect. Time period. What do you mean by time period? The what is the time period? Is the time required to complete all oscillation? So what is the frequency? Is the number of uh, number of oscillation in one second? That is called as frequency. So this is how exactly we can differentiate basically between uh, oscillation of a loaded spin. Okay. So what we have studied so far, we have discussed about the velocity, acceleration, as well as time period as well as uh, or frequency of a loaded spring over here and similarly we are going to deal that is uh, kinetic energy, potential energy and uh, total energy and one more concept we can expect that is uh, the frequency as well as time period of simple pendulum. So these are the concepts are yet to come uh, till that you try to have an eye on this particular concept the things which I have discussed so far. Okay? Thank you very much.